Hello everyone, I am Hamid Safari, I am earliest stage researcher on SIMA 5G. SIMA 5G project has received funding from the European Union Horizons Unique Research and Innovation Program under the Mari Sklodowska Kuri project number 813391. In this video, we want to talk about the STM's small cell network and the beam forming in 5G network, why we need to increase the security on 5G more than the previous generation as 4G or 3G, and also uh, talking about the common type of machine learning which used in cybersecurity network, and uh, finally conclusion. First, we start with SCN and team forming in 5G network. What is SCN? A small cell network. In the 5G, the frequency is higher than the frequency in 3G and 4G. So, higher frequency waves have their own problems. The higher frequency has more collusion with obstacles, can lose energy more quickly, cover shorter distance, and easily blocked by buildings and trees. For example, in this picture, as you see, the signal cannot transmit to the user that is behind the tree. And for the other side of this slide, you can see the user behind the building cannot receive the signal from the 5G tower. To solve this problem, we divided the area to many small areas. We call this small area the SCM, a small cell network. And we support that a small cell area with a cell tower. So as you see here, we have many cell towers and can cover the users behind the building and uh, behind the tree and can overcome this problem. What is beam forming and tracking? In 3G and 4G, when a user want to have a communication with the cell tower, cell tower sends the signal to all area that is covered by the cell tower. So you can see the user A, user B, and user C. But the signal for the three users transmitted to all directions that is covered by the cell tower. And it caused to consume a lot of energy. To resolve this problem, in 5G, the cell tower only transmit the signal for the user A to the location of the user A and for user B transmit the signal to the location of the user B and also for user C. If the user move and change the location, the cell tower start to tracking the user and send the signal to the new location of the user. We call this beam forming and tracking. You can see that in the 5G network for performing beam forming and tracking in a small cell, we need to know the exact location of the user. So this is why we need to increase the security in the 5G more than the 3G and 4G. Because in 5G network, the 5G network have access to the exact location of the user. So let's talk about the deep learning and shallow learning and difference between them. What is deep network? As you can see in this picture, we have a neural network. From the left side, there is an input layer. In the right side is the output layer. And everything that is between the input layer and output layer, we call hidden layer. In this picture, we have only one hidden layer. In the another picture that you can see in the below, in the left side, we have the input layer, the first layer in the left side, and we have the output layer, the last layer in the right, and everything between output layer and input layer is the hidden layer, same as the above picture. So, in the above picture, we have one hidden layer, and in the below picture, we have three hidden layers. If we have only one hidden layer we call shallow network and if we have more than one hidden layer we call deep network. Another categorization for network is according to the learning and we can categorize the supervised learning and unsupervised learning and it depends our data. If 
for each input data, the output data is exist that currently have labeled data and for each input data we have the output. So we can use both supervised learning and unsupervised learning. But if we have only input data and we don't have any label for the data, the only choice is unsupervised learning. For example, for the supervised learning, we can use classification and regression, and the difference is in output data. If our output data is discrete, we can use classification, and if the output data is continuous, we introduce regression. The deep learning is a subset of machine learning. It is a newer and more complex way of learning than the known. So, here I talk about supervised learning. But about the unsupervised learning, just mention that the goal of unsupervised learning is to find a mapping that is able to describe a hidden structure from unlabeled data sample. It is a powerful tool for identifying a structure when unlabeled data samples are given. Over the last few years, deep learning was applied to hundreds of problems. Computer vision, pattern recognition, speech recognition, speech synthesis, natural language processing, computer games, robots, self-driving cars, and many other problems. So, let's talk about deep learning methods for cybersecurity applications. Cybersecurity. First of all, what is the cybersecurity? The cybersecurity is the collection of crisis, techniques, technology, and process that work together to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of computing resources, network, software programs, and data from attacks. Cyber defense mechanisms exist at application, network, hot, and data level. Deep learning methods used for cybersecurity application is deep autoencoder, restricted Boltzmann machines for RBM, convolutional neural networks or DNN, recurrent neural networks or RNN, generative adversarial networks or GAN. The restricted Boltzmann machine is the building block of the deep leaf network and restricted Boltzmann machine and deep leaf network can be categorized as a subset of deep autoencoder. The scope of cybersecurity. The scope of cybersecurity is broad and can be grouped into five areas: crucial infrastructure, network security, cloud security application security, and IoT security. And we have different type of attacks in cyber security. Malware, spam, insider threat, network intrusion, false data injection, and malicious domain name used by botnet. As an example, we talk about network security, and network intrusion attack and network intrusion detection. So, network intrusion detection. What is the network intrusion detection? Network security is an important challenge in the field of cybersecurity because networks provide the means for crucial access to other devices and for connectivity between all the assets in cyberspace. Several network attacks can lead to system damage, network paralysis, and data loss or leakage. Network Intrusion Detection System, or NIDS, attempts to identify unauthorized illicit and anonymous behavior based solely on network traffic to support decision-making in network preventative actions by network administrators. Network intrusion detection systems mainly aim to classify the monitored traffic as either legitimate or malicious. 
It monitors network traffic, for example, to analyze them for sign of possible attack or suspicious activity. And the system constantly performs analysis and watches for certain patterns of passing traffic in a monitored network environment. If the detected traffic patterns match the defined signature or policies in the knowledge space, for example, based on a trained neural network, a security alert is generated. And it's deployed in both passive and inline methods. You can see the different cybersecurity applications and deep learning methods that use for these applications for intrusion detection, domain generation algorithm detection, malware detection, insider threats, and spam identification. For each one of these, many researchers work on the intrusion detection and use different kind of deep learning methods. You can see the example of these methods, autoencoder, TNN, RNN, RBM, both RBM and RNN, both RBM and autoencoder, and BNN for intrusion detection. And you can see for other same as intrusion detection use the method that used for malware detection, insider threat, spam identification, and DGA. You can see the autoencoder used in many different cybersecurity applications and CNN and RNN also. So, in the continue, we talk about the autoencoder as an example because we cannot explain all of these methods. So, for example, we talk about Autoencoder. What is the autoencoder? Autoencoder is a subset of unsupervised neural network. To use autoencoder, you don't need the data with the label. Only you need the data, and you don't need the label or the output for the data. And the goal is to match the output to the same input vector. We have two kinds of network, generative and discriminative. The autoencoders are generative. Some of application of the autoencoders is denoising, recontracting the input, reducing dimension or increasing the dimension, feature extraction or feature compression, and also can use as classification. So let's talk about autoencoder. You can see the autoencoder here that have two parts, encoder and decoder. The decoder is the same as the encoder. So if you put a mirror in the middle of this autoencoder, you can see this layer is the same as this layer, and the green layer in decoder is the same as green layer in the encoder, and the blue layer, the last layer in the right in decoder is the same layer in the encoder and the weight also is the same. So, if you put the input to the first layer, to the first layer of encoder, after transmitted to many layers, you can get the same vector that you put to the input layer on the output layer. So, the output is the same as input. But, what is the benefit of this process? Why we need to reproduce or recontract the input. Well, as I said before, one of the uses is denoising. When we learn our autoencoder with the normal data, we can use this trained autoencoder to denoise the input. So we can put the noisy input and we can receive the normal data without any noise. Another use of the autoencoder is if you cut this autoencoder from the half and use only encoder, this part, you can use this encoder as feature extraction. Why? Because with these two features, for example, in this picture, with these two features, you can reproduce the input data. 
So the feature that you can reproduce the data is one of the best features that you can extract from the data. So this is why we say you can use for feature extraction. Or you can use feature or dimensionally compression. If you have a if you have a highly dimensioned data, you can use encoder to decrease the dimension of the data and throw out the extra useless of data. And also you can use for classification. But how to learn this autoencoder? This autoencoder learn it layer by layer separately. For example, if we want to learn the green layer in this picture, in the left picture, the output should be the same as the input. And on this process, we can learn the green layer and put the green layer here. To learn another layer, the next layer, the output of the green layer, you can see here, the green layer here as an input, and the output should be the same as input. And after the training process, this middle layer, layer 3, is trained, and we put here, and so on. So the training is very simple, and layer by layer. So if you want to increase the power of autoencoder, just add another layer. And how we can use autoencoder for classification? For classification, we have two methods that use autoencoder for classification. First, remove the decoder and only use the encoder. You can see here, we only use the encoder and remove the decoder. And you can remove the last layer and insert classifier. So in layer 1, we put the input data. In layer 2, we extract features. In layer 3, we extract the higher level feature. And in the layer 4, we put a classifier, for example, ASPN, and classify the data. For classification, we need the label data. But there is another way for classification with autoencoder. For example, in the picture above, if we train the data with the label, so we can get in the output the data and the label. And what happens in the test mode if we don't have label and remove the label or put zero instead of label? Do you remember what this autoencoder used for denoising? So like that, the same as denoising method, if we put input and don't put the label in the input layer of the autoencoder in the test time, we can receive the input and the label. So this is another method of classification that we can reproduce the label. The purpose of this project is to design an efficient and effective privacy reservation mechanism for a small cell network that features secure authentication algorithms. It depends on deep networks that I described in this authentication and privacy preservation chain for 5G small cell networks to protect user identity and location privacy. Thank you for watching.